Welcome to the Ontario Federation of Labour Power of Many presentation on the three important rights that workers have under the Occupational Health and Safety Act. It is important for workers to know their rights under the Act. This slideshow provides a brief overview of those rights. Who is covered by the Occupational Health and Safety Act, the OHSA? The Act applies to almost every worker, supervisor, employer, and workplace in Ontario. It covers owners, constructors, and suppliers of equipment and materials to workplaces that are covered under the Act. However, there are some exceptions. Some workers are not covered by the Act. They include owners or occupants or servants working in individual private residences or on the land surrounding them. Some places are covered by federal jurisdiction, and so they're not covered. That said, some outside contractors and employees are covered under provincial jurisdiction, even if they're working in a federal workplace. Here are some examples of federal workplaces and how they're regulated. Federal workplaces include workplaces like post offices, airlines, airports, banks, certain grain elevators, telecommunications, and any sort of interprovincial transportation. Trucking, shipping, rail, and buses are all covered under the Canada Labour Code, which is administered federally through Employment and Social Development Canada. Now let's talk about the three rights that workers fought for and gained many years ago so that you have the understanding you need to protect your health and safety in your workplace. The three fundamental rights of workers under the Occupational Health and Safety Act are the right to know, the right to participate, and the right to refuse. Workers have fought to obtain these rights. Let's run through them and how you exercise them in the workplace. The right to know includes the right to receive training so that you can do your job safely and understand the health effects of hazardous exposures, such as chemicals or toxic substances found in many workplaces. This could include exposure to coronavirus. The right to know also means that workers must receive information on many types of hazards, including machinery, equipment, or violence and harassment, which is unfortunately all too common in workplaces today. The right to know also means workers must be provided with information about what to do in the case of an emergency or injury. Injury and illness need to be reported to the employer so action can be taken immediately. The next right we're going to look at is the right to participate. All workers have the right to participate under the Occupational Health and Safety Act. This right means that workers have a say in helping to make and keep the workplace safe and healthy. In a workplace with 20 or more employees, the right to participate is primarily exercised through a joint health and safety committee. On that committee, half the members are workers who have been selected by other workers in that workplace. For workplaces that are smaller, between 6 and 19 workers, there must be a health and safety representative. Again, that representative must be selected by the workers to represent them. The next right is one of the most important rights that workers have, the right to refuse unsafe work. To exercise the right to refuse, a worker need only have reason to believe that there is a hazard. You do not need to have proof that the work, equipment, or machinery might hurt you or another worker or that you are in danger of workplace violence. There are four steps to follow to refuse unsafe work. The first step is to tell the employer. Who you should tell depends on who is in charge in your particular workplace. For instance, you might tell a frontline supervisor, or if you work in a medical care facility, you might tell the charge nurse. It depends who the supervisor is in your particular workplace. Once you've told the supervisor, they have a duty to investigate your concern. That investigation is the second step in refusing unsafe work. Step three is that while they are investigating, it is your responsibility to remain in a safe place. Step four comes after the investigation. If it is found that you have refused unsafe work on reasonable grounds, then in most cases, the employer must call the Ministry of Labor. Now, let's review the steps. First, tell your employer about the hazard and that you are refusing work until it is investigated. Remember that you do not need to know the exact section of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, only that you have a concern and will not work until that concern is resolved. The employer then has a duty under the law to investigate. This is step two. 
Depending on the size of the workplace, they must do so with a member of the Joint Health and Safety Committee or the Health and Safety Representative. Step 3 is that while the investigation into the hazard is happening, you need to remain in a safe place near your workstation until the investigation is complete. There is one exception in this step, and that is in the case of workplace violence. In those cases, you must go to a place where you are no longer at risk of violence. And step four, if the investigation by the employer and the worker representatives finds no reasonable grounds and you still believe that the work is hazardous, your employer must call the Ministry of Labor so that an inspector can investigate and render a decision. There are some limitations on the right to refuse. These limitations include people working in hospitals, long-term care homes, paramedics, firefighters, police, corrections workers, and teachers. These are jobs where the circumstances of their work have risks as a normal condition of employment. For instance, a firefighter couldn't refuse to enter a burning house because it's part of their job to help put out the fire. For these workers, a work refusal would directly endanger the life and safety of another person. For instance, a nurse could not exercise the right to refuse if it would put a patient in jeopardy. Workers have important duties under the Occupational Health and Safety Act. The first duty of workers is to follow the law and the health and safety policies and practices in their workplace. They also have a duty to wear and use protective equipment that is required in their workplace by the employer. As well, workers have the duty not to work or act in a way that would hurt themselves or another worker. And finally, it is also a worker's duty to report hazards or injuries to their supervisor. This isn't necessarily refusing to work with a hazard. However, it is important to provide the information to the employer so that it can be resolved. Employers also have duties under the Act. Employers have a duty to take all reasonable precautions to protect the health and safety of workers. They have the duty to ensure that equipment, materials, and protective equipment are maintained and in good condition so that workers are not put at risk by poor maintenance. Employers must provide information, instruction, and supervision to protect worker health and safety. Finally, it is the duty of the employer to cooperate with the Joint Health and Safety Committee, which will make recommendations to the employer. It is very important for workers to know that it is totally illegal for employers to use any kind of reprisal against you for acting on any of your rights. That means the employer is not allowed to threaten you, fire you, threaten to fire you, suspend you, or otherwise punish you when you exercise your rights. There must be no intimidation and no penalty. Reprisals are totally illegal. If an employer does enact reprisals against a worker, there are places where workers can get help. You can call the Ministry of Labor at 1-877-202-0008. You can call your union. There are also places for non-union workers to get help. The Office of the Worker Advisor has offices around the province. You can reach them at 1-855-659-7744. Workers who qualify for legal aid can access the Workers Health and Safety Legal Clinic. They will help you determine if you qualify for legal aid. You can reach out to them at 1-877-832-6090. For more resources, including training, reach out to the Workers' Health and Safety Centre, which provides hazard-based training to give workplace representatives the knowledge and skills they need to proactively identify, assess, and control, if not eliminate, hazardous working conditions. Prevention Link provides training on a range of topics beneficial to all parties in the workplace and essential to workers' compensation and disability accommodation. Resources are also available from the Occupational Health Clinics for Ontario Workers, OCAW, which strives to address occupational hazards and promote the social, mental, and physical well-being of workers and their families. The organization's aim is to protect workers and their communities from occupational disease, injuries, and illnesses. Workers and their representatives continue to lobby to gain enhancements to the Occupational Health and Safety Act and health and safety regulations. Every worker should have a safe and healthy workplace. This has been a Power of Many presentation on the three rights of workers, the right to know, the right to participate, and the right to refuse. Thank you for joining us.